must forgive. Oh, you hear me? Amen. You must forgive this lady. Amen. I did already. Huh? You forgive? You forgive? Eh? Yes. Huh? Yes. Because God wants to restore you. Amen. You hear me? Amen. This is some kind of a ritual that was performed in your church. You people, you pastors, yes. let me let me tell you this. Yes, I forgive them. Because you, you are hearing me. Let me tell you this. In a church, before you put someone on the pulpit, can you pray? Huh? You need to pray because you're going to be destroyed by people uh, that will come to you and say, I'm hearing God say, telling me this. I'm hearing God. And at that time, they're not even hearing anything. This woman destroyed your church. Yes. And you hear me? Yes. By the issue of saying, I'm, I'm hearing God telling me. I'm hearing God. Now she has taken on the membership. <laughs> that is true. So now I want to tell you and the Lord forgive this lady before God punish her. Yes, I did. Because that. any sin, I'll give you time to say something. Any sin that you do, God forgives, but there will be a small punishment. Let me tell you how. Remember David, what he did. When he take Uriah's, Uriah's wife, sleep with her. God sent a prophet and said, why are you doing this now? And later he brought a punishment to him. It does not mean God didn't forgive you. So whoever that sins against you or attack you, their punishment is waiting. When I just forgive them, I don't know if you heard what I said. Their punishment is certain. God is very wise when he's very intelligent. He just say, ah, don't worry, I've forgiven you. But the punishment is coming. <laughs> I'm telling you. You just look at you and say, ah, no, ah, when I, I've forgiven you. But punishment is coming. You'll be punished. Nicely so. You know, God is professional. He's, he's professional. He, he will deal with you nicely. Deal with you, deal with you. It's as good as someone clap you. Say, ah, when I woke up, say, ah, you are injured. You say, ah, sorry, sorry, mama, sorry. Sorry. Come here, let me pray for you. Let's restore your church. Because there are some certain things that God has showed you about these people. You are hearing me? Yes. That there's blood sacrifices. You are hearing me? Yes. Now this woman destroyed your church. Let's pray for restoration. You came uh, with daddy and then he was fixing things around. You were fixing things around? I saw you with daddy in the vision also. And then you came and then Can you, you, was, hear what he's you were saying? fixing things around. Uh, uh, they, they didn't hear you. Repeat what you said. You saw what? I saw you with daddy. When you came. In the church? Yes. When you came. Vision. Yes. Uh. And then you are fixing things, fixing things, fixing things. things. It's fixing not things. us, it's Jesus. Amen. We can't fix anything. It's Jesus. He's trying to make you understand. Amen. We can't do anything. Touch here. Jesus, my name. Jesus' name. This lady destroyed the church, took everything, took members. This man is left alone. Jesus, my name. Come out. You know, she started by saying, Can I, I prophesy? I'm, I, I'm prophesying, I'm prophesying. Later on, now the church is divided. It's left with two, three members. The prophetess took over. Tell you people you love to be called prophetess. Come on! Come out! Out, you demon! Out! Prophetess took over. Come out! Whatever that she has done to you, I want God to reverse it in the name of Jesus. Come on! Come on! Come on! Come on! 
Viewers all over the world, welcome to Charis Missionary Church. This is our Wednesday live service under the leadership of Apostle JB and Prophetess T. Makanenisa. And with me here today is my brother who is located during the service by the man of God, Prophet Andrew Simono. So kindly please tell us your name and tell us where you come from. My name is Prophet MK. I came from Swaziland. Today during the service, Prophet Andrew Simono located you and spoke upon your life. Would you kindly please tell us in detail what he said to you and please confirm it. He first said to me, I must forget, I must forgive this lady here. And then I say, I'm already forgiving her. And he went on to say to me, say, because they had done a lot of harm to the church. She had destroyed the church. Um, it all began by the lady coming to the church as a normal member. And before I know it, uh, she went to my wife, because it's my wife that came to me to the, for the first time, and said to me, this lady here wants to say something to me. And she say, and then I asked my wife to let her in. When she come in, she said to me, um, she had been sent by God to be able to help us in the church. Uh, as a church, we are always welcome to have someone that is willing to work for God. So before the course of the time, she began to bring some revelation out. Then he asked, oh, she, uh, God tell her this about, uh, about uh, something concerning the church. But the, the amazing thing was what she was always pointing people in the church, accusing them to be the one attacking the church. And then for two years, for the whole two years, I was praying about it. Because according to the way I see the apostle doing the ministry, we did not point the finger in the member and accusing them to be the one causing the downfall of the church. So I never really accused those people, but I was working with it underground and try by all means to put things in the low motion. But she keeping on going on saying a lot of things that caused me to even put some member down because the pressure was so much. Because if someone is keeping coming and say to you, God say this, God say that, God say that, end of the day, you need to listen to the voice of that person. So I decided to listen to her for some few things. I decided to put some people aside. And then that went worse because I begin to see people leaving the church because she was not just doing that she was also going behind and say to the people say no I am not okay I'm speaking about them and telling those people say no this is not a good church they have to leave the church that was her strategy of driving people out of the church and she got show me this vision and say to me say do you know who is destroying the church I said no and he showed me the picture of the lady I was shocked and he said to me say he called the name of the lady. He even tell me which spirit she's operating with. And then when I woke up, I was so shocked because the way she's active in the church. Because most of us do not understand how these people work. They are very, very active. She can clean the church. She can pray. She can fast. She can do so many things to attract, to, to capture you as a man of God, your attention. So that was what she was doing. And Thank God you. have to reveal it to me. And when God revealed it to me, I decided to be able to comfort her. When I comfort her, she was very violent. She began to speak, attacking us in the church, saying so many things because there was a lot of proof. Because there was also two people in the process on that time that she was speaking to to take them out. And God used them also to be able to record what she was saying to them. And then all those things was front of her face and she became very aggressive and began to fight. And then she decided to leave the church. But um, the amazing thing is what, as a pastor, I was taking care of her. I was paying her house rent. I was buying food for her because of the way she was working in the church. And then when she left the church now, she didn't leave the place she was living on to. She's still living around the church. Like they are still monitoring the church, monitoring all our movement. Because that's what they say to me. The Holy Spirit said to me, say, you see why she didn't leave the place? Because they are not finished. She's not satisfied with what they was want to do. They was want to take you down completely. Because she's failed, now they don't want her to leave. And then they say to me, they are, she's not working alone. She with some people where they are behind her, supporting her to do such. So I don't know. And then I decided to forgive her. Yes, I decided to forgive her because I called my wife and I said to her, you know, this thing here is troubling me. Because like for a man, I didn't really have myself. I was completely troubled, completely, completely troubled. And then I decided to call my wife and say to her, remember the Bible says we shall forgive. And he said, we do not forgive only 
those who have done small things to us, but no matter how big it may be, we need to forgive. So, mommy, I need to forgive this person here. Because if you don't forgive this person here, it looks like I can't be able to pray. I was not able to pray again. I was not able to really feel myself as a man of God again. Then when I forgive her, I begin to feel better. So I am very happy about this prophecy today because God also showed me another vision that I came here to cherish in that vision. And the apostle asked me, do I love him? I said, yes, I love him. He said, am I sure I love him? I said, yes, I love him. He said, okay, I have this small, small bed here. They were just like, um, like those uh, beds I see outside the... the um, uh, some small, small bed, uh, and those those beds there. He said to me, "If you love me, where you will stand here, this bed here have to come near you to show to you because they are, they are, they, are, they will show how much you love me. And where I step there, all of them come to me. And then Apostle gives me some gifts. And Prophet Henry said to me, "Say, I never see anyone that came here, and all this bed come to him." And then when I went back, the apostle came to visit me with Prophet Henry's in that vision also. And then there was restoring things in the church. There was praying for the church, there was praying for the church. Yeah, I know the restoration was coming. I am very grateful about today. So, so how has this particular problem that the men of God mentioned today during the prophecy been affecting you? It affects me so much. As a man of God, I don't believe so we want to see our church going down. And we don't want to see our own member be accused between their self. Such things is not the right things in the church. I see something that I don't know. Uh, if I was doubting about the calling that I have, I could even say maybe I'm not called. Because sometimes when you believe that you are a man of God, you believe that you have to see some certain things. But some people can be just closer to you, and they are the one causing you to fall. And it will take you a long time to see them. It affects me so much, but I have to trust in God and believe in Him. I am very happy about the prophecy today, because it's just a confirmation of uh, what the Lord has said to me in that vision. And when I was coming here today, along the road from Switzerland to here, I've been praying. and praying to be located by the Apostle, and 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 the prophet so today i was very fortunate because i've been praying by the apostle i have been praying by the prophet and i received also a prophecy to be able to seal everything so i give all the glory to god and how would you encourage somebody who's going to come across this video i want to encourage my fellow pastor and say to them say be a pastor you know means that we cannot receive attack the attack can be very close to us and you have to take god to be able to show it to us and for God to show to us, we need to be very humble. The apostles speak today about our proud. And he said we need to be able to break this proud over us and be able to try to seek for solution when we have a problem. For me, I am not shine any time that I have a problem because I know that this is my house. Every time that I have a problem, I know say no, there is a place where I can go and I can be able to be restored. Please, men of God, don't be shy. If you have similar problem, you must come inside here and you will be restored in Jesus' name. Amen.